God's life transformed destiny. I thank you because in this service, I will not be limited by any demonic force or satanic power. Thank you for the preaching of your word. Heal the sickly, bring your prayers, and let Jesus be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. And let God's people shout out in the loud and clear. You may be seated. I came to weaponize you. I came to do what? Weaponize you. So that whatever you do in life, it may end in praise. Whatever you do in life, you may end well. The devil is not afraid of your beginning. The devil fears your finishing. The devil does not bother you when you start. He bothers how you finish. Is somebody hear what I'm saying here? Yes. The devil is aware the result is not mentioned and called at the beginning. Result is called at the end. So it doesn't matter how well you start. If you can't finish in place, it is as good as not starting at all. There are powers that don't fight you at the beginning. There are powers that don't fight you at the middle. There are powers that only fight you at the finishing line. So that you don't end anything in place. It's the reason for divorce because of those powers. So that your marriage don't end in divorce. It's the reason for start. So that there is no longevity in your job. It's the reason for business bankruptcy. So that you don't end your business in abundance. It's the reason for financial emptiness so that your account does not end in buoyancy but today that may that is above the middle of the power fighting your finishing fighting your finishing if I hear that let the power that fire you will listen let the power that fire now I don't like that baby let the power that fire now in the name that is above the name of the name, whatever you start, you will finish. The ghost of Pagliata, you will not end halfway. You will finish in place. That school, you will finish it. In the that exam, you will finish it. That job, you will finish it. That project, you will finish it. And you start there working on your papers, you will finish it. Any power that wants to amputate, want to harass, want to diminish you, want to reduce you. What do people you? If I hear your name, the power that is fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. There are powers that don't show up at the beginning. They show up at the finish. They show up at the end. Adam started well, but he never finished well. Too many people are good starters, but bad finishers. Adam started well in the garden, but never end well. If somebody hear what I say, Reuben started well. That was the beginning of my mind, the excellency of dignity. But he never finished well. He became a reproach. His father made him a wanderer on the face of the earth. He was, he didn't finish well. God is telling me today that you will end the praise. John chapter 17 and verse number 4 is our text. Jesus end in praise. Jesus was a good finisher. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth, and I have finished the work which thou givest me. I have glorified thee on the earth, and I have finished all the work which thou givest me. I declare your assignment on earth, your purpose on earth, your motivation on earth, the reason why you are alive. Green, you will finish it. You will finish your project. You will finish your dream. In the mighty name of Jesus. What does it mean to end a praise? Number one is to arrive at desired destination. What does it mean to end a praise? To arrive at desired destination. How many of you have a desired destination? There's somewhere you want to reach in life. There's a destination you have in mind. If I hear your name, you will arrive at that destination. Number two, what does it mean to end a praise? It means to reach an expected conclusion. 
to reach what? An expected conclusion. I pray to somebody. That conclusion you'll be waiting for. That conclusion you're waiting for in that deal. In that deal. In that deal. Can somebody hear me in that deal? I declare that expected conclusion after that interview. That expected conclusion after applying. That expected conclusion you have. Know what they have. Know what the powers in your father has. has. What you have, I decree you will reach your expected conclusion. What does it need to any grace is to accomplish a faith with the sense of satisfaction. Is to accomplish a feat, F E eight, F E eight S, to accomplish a feat with a sense of satisfaction. That feeling that you are alive, that feeling that you have fulfilled your destiny. What does it mean to any grace? Number four is to end on a good note. To end on a good note. I declare as for someone, you will end on a good note. <laughs> what does it mean to end a praise? Number five is termination at the point of fulfillment. Termination at the point of fulfillment. That is to say, it is not permitted to be terminated until you are fulfilled, until you have, you have achieved, until you have attained, until you have arrived. But you have reached your maximum capacity. I declare from today, your fulfillment will be your portion. Fulfillment will be your portion. Fulfillment will be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. So to end in praise is to justify every investment of effort. Is to justify every investment of effort. I prophesy to somebody, you will justify that investment of your effort. You put so much in that business. You put so much in that relationship. You put so much in that marriage. You put so much in that church. I declare you will justify every investment of your effort in the mighty name of Jesus. What does it mean to any praise? Is to give credence to inputs. To give credence to inputs. To give credence to inputs. Can I talk to you, sir? So when you lack the weapon, to end well, you will never end in praise. There are weapons that ask you. There are weapons that enables you to end anything you want to start. To end it in praise. Whether it is a journey of relationship, whether it is a journey of business, whether it is a journey of career, whether it is a journey of ministry, I declare you will end well. You will end well. You will end in praise. Sir. Can I talk to you, sir? Ending in praise is not a product of longevity. Am I talking to somebody here? Ending in praise is a product of how well. How well. Jesus lived 33 years. Then he ended in praise. Sir. Did you not see? All that thou givest me to do, I have finished it. When he cried on that old rocket cross and said it is finished, he has accomplished his purpose. Two thousand years after he has gone, we are still preaching him, we are still singing his song, we are still writing more books about him. So it's not about duration, it's about donation. This is not the no, 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 no. Can I pray for somebody here? Hear me, hear me well. You will fulfill your days, you will fulfill your assignment. You will fulfill your purpose. You will accomplish your dreams. It will come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus. One man fulfilled an end in praise. He said in first second Timothy forces. He said, I am now ready to be offered. For my time of departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight of faith. I have finished. I have arrived. I was at now, now he had a crown of glory. Who said Lord Jesus will give to me? The guy was dying to feel. He was going in praise. Yeah, there was another man called Moses. God took him to the mountain. He was begging not to die. He lived 120 years, yet he didn't want to die. He was begging not to die. 
but this guy born with 89 years, he was begging to go. He was ready to go. Do you know the difference? Because Moses was dying unfulfilled. There is a Kenan man he must enter. There is a land of glory with me and money. He must enjoy. The God took him to the mountain and said, See the land from where thou art, but thou shalt not enter. Moses died unfulfilled. The Lord died fulfilled. I declare in the name of Jesus, nothing will kill you before your time. You will not die in the face of the fugitive. You will not die in the face of the wanderer. You will fulfill your destiny. Do the wings that is with that is with you now. Look so do that is good way now. That has got you before your time. You will fulfill your days. You will accomplish your purpose. You will maximize your destiny. You will let down your dream. You will achieve your purpose.
a praise is a weapon of praise and gratitude. That is the number one weapon. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. The NLT, I love the NLT translation. Psalm 28 and verse 5. You give me the King James. First Thessalonians 5, verse 8. Psalm. Praise is the weapon to end anything in praise. Hear this. It is what facilitates the process that guarantees <clears throat> our desired product to become a reality. <laughs> uh, let us live in the light and be clear headed by the armor. Verse 18, sorry, verse 18. Verse 18, and then your brother, verse 18. 518. But we thankful in be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances. Psalm 28 and verse 5. I want to show you something. Psalm 28 and verse number 5. And then Psalm 69 and verse 30 to 31. I just want to show you a few things. Give me five minutes, let me do some teachings, and then we scatter in a thousand directions. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, not the oppressions of his hand, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Because they regard not the works of the Lord and the oppressions of his hands, he will destroy them and not build them up. They will finish what they start. Because they disregarded the place of gratitude. Now, Psalm 69, 69 and verse 30 to 31. Quickly, verse 30 to 31. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. What next says This also shall please the Lord better than oxen and bullocks that have no, have no horns or hooves. The answer Gratitude is the sponsor, praise is the sponsor to ending well. Where praise is your seed, ending well is your harvest. Where gratitude is your seed, ending well is your harvest. Can I talk to you, sir? Sir, when you forget source, you forfeit resources. When you forget source, you forfeit resources. Many have no resources in their hand, capital in their hand. They, they, they take no heart in their hands because they have not regarded the place of source. Hear me, hear me well. Nobody likes an ungrateful person. An ungrateful person is an irritant to God and irritant to any mortal man. Whoever you are, you will never love an ungrateful person. Whoever you are, you will never love an ungrateful wife, an ungrateful children, an ungrateful husband. Nobody remembers an ungrateful person. Because once you are ungrateful, people will not remember to help you. People will not remember to favor you tomorrow. But when your heart is full of gratitude, you'll be full of God. You'll be full of blessings. You'll be full of greatness. Many of you live holy. Many of you can fast. Many of you can pray. But there's this devil that is eating up your ending well. It's called that devil of ingratitude. Every ungrateful man is an irritant to God. He's an irritant to God. Hear me, hear me well. Any man that is ungrateful, he is baptized with the spirit of retrogressive pattern, retrogressive thinking. And when you are baptized with the spirit of retrogressive thinking, you will be thinking backwards so you cannot go forward and pray for somebody. Be delivered from the spirit of ungratefulness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Excluded, you are on your own. You pursue destiny on your own. Daniel chapter 2, verse number 16. The realm of answer comes from God, and the God can only be involved when you are grateful. Then went in Daniel, desire of the king in, uh, to give him time. Then he will show the king the interpretation. 
I Daniel met Ananas at Zerah and the stream development and told them that they should desire messages from God to show them this mystery. Then was the vision revealed unto Daniel in the visions of the night. So the secrets that will make you shine on earth is the exclusive custodian of an immortal spirit. Access and an access to those secrets is by fraternization with this immortal spirit. The gateway to accessing the glory of this immortal spirit is the gateway of praise and gratitude. Answer is when God gives you correct solution to a pressing need, to a pressing problem. Many of us are confronted with enigma. We are confronted with pressing problems. We are confronted with situation we cannot fathom, we cannot calculate, we cannot dissolve. Answers comes from God. The answers that God gives, He gives them on the platform of gratitude and on the platform of praise. Men who are grateful grateful are commanders of answers. And if you are a commander of answers, you will always end well in all your activity. I pray for somebody here. Every spirit of ungratefulness dies in the name of Jesus. I say it dies in the name of Jesus. Sir, gratitude terminate critical cases. Gratitude. Praise the Lord. It deals with mundanic, moribonic, and ironic cases. Hear this, sir. It is in praise. We unfold the true signs of God. Sir, God is as big as your praise. When there is no praise, there is no bigness of God. The size of God is at the mercy of your gratitude. Can I talk to you, sir? Big God mentality equals to big God testimony. Big God mentality equals to big God testimony. And big God testimony equals to big God appreciation. I pray for somebody. May you be grateful to God. Anytime you wake up in the morning and you look at yourself, just say, I'm alive. I give you glory. Lord, because last night you died. You died last night. The man woke you this morning. And you could know your name. You could know where you slept and woke up. You could understand what you said. Pray for a house and pray for two bedrooms. If you 
is a captain. He beats his wife morning. Her breakfast is beaten. Her lunch is beaten. Her dinner is beaten. One day he packed her load and dropped in the house of the uncle. Says no man in the That the woman should get out of his life. The woman started crying. We prayed for her. Led her to Christ. The pastor of the church then, I was just a member. The pastor of the church decided to keep her in the boys quarters of the church. So she was there. Then she joined the choir. She was singing. She was singing. She was singing. Unknown to her, three years into her song, this former husband had become a major in the army. They didn't know that a colonel, a lieutenant colonel, came to that service for the first time to worship. And the choir master made a mistake and gave her to lead the song. As she was leading the song, this, this colonel heart was being He said, that lady that sang, I found my wife, I found my wife. I was like, you are just coming today, I find you wife. Yeah, you He said, Pastor, I see a project here. I donate five million. I said, thank you for the five million. Who are you? You want to marry you to who? He said, that lady, he said, Pastor, don't let her go. He said, I know her. I know her, so don't worry, she can go. To cut the long story short, finally, Pastor got to know him. He got to know the pastor and got to know the lady. And the pastor, my, my pastor friend, and joined the marriage. And they got married. And before you know, three months after, they promoted that uh, new husband to a colonel. And before you know, about a government in Nigeria now meeting the governor of a state. No, the story has not finished. Make the man, the new husband, the governor of the state. This is our daughter that became the first lady of the state. That is not all. That her former husband, they posted him to be the first lady of the The she will give him the back to home. Where there is thanksgiving. Can I talk to you, sir? 
those who know how to thank God can never be empty. Those who know how to thank God can never be victim in life. So in every condition the Bible says, in all circumstances, give him thanks. You did eat in the morning, give him thanks. The man walked out to you, give him thanks. There's no money in your pocket, give him thanks. If you know where some of us came from and where we are, if it has not been the Lord who was on our side, when our enemies rose up against us, they would have followed us with when our soul and our strength, the strength is broken, and we have a strength. Sometimes I'm asking for you, you will end the grace. You will never die with that condition. Can I hear somebody shout, I hear? I hear. One more time. I hear. Number two. I hear. Number three. I hear. So that I don't bore you with this topic. Number two weapon you need if you must end the praise is the act of mastering the spirit realm. The spirit realm is the custodian of all realms. The spirit realm is where the believer people stands. You have no advantage. In this life, your advantage is in the spirit. The advantage of the fish is in the water. The advantage of the lion is in the jungle. The advantage of the aeroplane is when it's in the sky. The advantage of the believer is when he people side in the spirit. Spirit realm is your habitat. Spirit realm is where you will designed to exist and to represent because you are a believer of dual personality you live in the spirit you live in the physical you live in the spirit you make you live on earth but you spend the resources of the spirit on earth concerning jesus jesus ruled in his generation because he was a man who spent the resources of heaven here on earth in john chapter 3 verse 13 he says the son of man which is from heaven the son of man the son of man on earth he was walking on earth then all of his resources all of his blessings no man has ascended to heaven and said he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven he is on earth but he's operating from heaven to end anything well you must stay in your place of strength. You must function from the place of your strength and from the place of your advantage. A person who is a psalmist decide to be to decide to be a pharmacy. He will end well. A pharmacist who wants to be a psalmist will turn everybody's head. To look like this is not fire. Is somebody hear what I'm saying here? You will never end well if you do not function in your advantage. As a believer, your advantage is in the spirit. It is by mastering the spirit realm that we can maximize the divinity in our nature. Believer has divinity and has nature. So the spirit realm is where we dwell. We have no advantage except we function in the spirit realm. We are born of the spirit. John chapter 3, verse 6. Except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we are to dwell in the spirit. And we must come. The Bible says, every verse might be born of what I would say, he cannot enter. Until we come to the knowledge of how the spirit realm function and how the spirit realm operate, so we will suffer casualty. Why? Because everything we see here is controlled from that realm. The spirit realm is the custodian of all realms. It is the realm that controls every other realm. We see visible, we are made by invisible materials, intangible substance. So, but you are a trafficker of paranormal articles. You can never have dominion on the face of the earth. Someone said, 